Hello and welcome to News Trash here on the Gig Show. This is a weekly episode in which we take a look at what's been happening in the world of video games. Sometimes it's busy, sometimes it's quiet, but I'm always joined by Rob. I'm also Rob. That's the other Rob. He reads the news. Hello! That was almost seamless. Uh, like a perfect <laughs> intro and then I bottled it in the last sentence by introduce, forgetting to introduce myself. So, you choked. Um, you like that? You like that? <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you like you like Stuart Pearce when he went to take that penalty in the World Cup. Why would you say that? That's just cruel. <laughs> hey, I say that because he redeemed himself in a in a different tournament by beating everybody up in football, being rough as hell. <laughs> well, they called him psycho for a reason. But yeah, uh, we've had a few problems on the show recently. Um, two weeks ago, all the video shenanigans happened. Uh, we made like a little intro called up and said, yes, yeah, sorry, technology failed us. Last week, we thought we had it, but then technology failed us, so we had to do another called up. And <laughs> so he is third time's a charm. So hopefully, we've got video this week. But if we haven't, we have tried, but we're going to try and do some stuff in the background in the meantime. So we'll, we'll continue trying. We'll yes. continue trying. Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll keep trying. We're very trying. Yeah. Um, I'll it's trying it in both sets of the world. And if this was the BBC, and this, assuming the video worked, if this was the BBC, you'd have to put loads of little white bits of tape over your, your drink so it's not giving like, free advertising to uh, Redacted. <laughs> <laughs> well, ironically enough, this does begin with an R. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's been... Um, yeah. Let's just jump into it. I don't want to do oh, so how have you been this week? Because once upon a time in podcasts it was like, Yeah, I've had a good week, I did this, I did that. Whereas this in in, in today times is oh, so how was your week? Well, I looked at a different wall today. <laughs> well, I, I, I will say one thing, um, before we begin. Happy birthday for yesterday. Mm, yes. I don't know whether we want to pee behind the wall like that, but you went ahead and did it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I will just say, I, I'm not going to tell everyone how old you are, but I will just say 19. happy birthday for yesterday. It's been a hard 19 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, really hard. <laughs> really tough. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> they don't know me. They can't prove that I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. They can't prove that you're wrong. <laughs> mm. Right, okay. Forget about that. Let's move on to Microsoft. Smooth segue right. there. Microsoft. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what the segue was was trying to be, and I don't think I bothered. <laughs> Just moving on. <laughs> Microsoft, their uh, acquisition of Zenimax has finally been approved by the EU, which uh, and the European Commission said it's got no concerns with the deal impacting the common market. So that means uh, that uh, I mean it's a significant hurdle for Microsoft's acquisition of Zenimax, and. Uh, they're uh, you know they're well on the way now to having complete ownership of Zenimax. I don't think there's anyone really stopping them now from finishing the deal off. Maybe a couple of little legal loopholes here and there, but that's basically it. But on the back of that, what we've had is uh, Phil Spencer and Microsoft in general confirming that some future Bethesda games will be Xbox and PC ex- exclusives. And Phil Spencer has actually stressed exclusivity in the Zenimax deal. He's actually stated this is about delivering great exclusive games for you that ship on platforms where Game Pass exists. Here's the thing. People don't know what words mean. The yeah. amount of uh, debate about what the word some means mm. has been <laughs> mind-blowing. All right, some, in case you don't know, it's more than a few and less than all. And uh, well, it, yeah, and also uh, also less than a lot. Yeah, it's this sort of debate which has got the PlayStation uh, community saying, oh, we're going to get this, we're going to get that. Nothing's been confirmed. Basically, mm. it's going to be on a case-by-case basis. That's always stressed to have been the case. And on the Xbox side, all the people who work in the, side of the YouTube sphere uh, and the community, they basically say, oh, we're getting all of these exclusives. Everything is going to be an Xbox exclusive. They're both completely wrong. Every game is going yeah, to be judged I'm... 
like uh, games like Deathloop is going to be a PlayStation exclusive for a year, just like uh, Def- uh, Tokyo, yeah. Ghostwire Tokyo, and yeah. it's just going to be case by case scenarios. There are certain games that have historically come out only on PlayStation. Yeah, those you know the, the back catalogue of those games may now come out on Xbox. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know what the truth is going to be. Um, and it used to be that Mass Effect, for example, uh, BioWare's Mass Effect, the first Mass Effect game came out on the Xbox 360. You couldn't get it on PlayStation 3 at all. I think the version Mass Effect 2 and 3 you now, get. The legendary one, that's going to be the yeah. first time it's been available on PlayStation, I think. Maybe. Nope. Nope. Because I have the Mass Effect collection for the PlayStation 3, and it was available on that. Okay, I never realised that. And that was Mass Effect 1, 2, or 3. Yeah, it was the only way you get Mass Effect originally on the PlayStation was to buy the collection. You couldn't get the original Mass Effect any other way. Yeah, most are going to be and exclusives, though. Let's, let's let's get back to that. Most are yeah. going to be exclusives. Uh, they're going to get a lot of new things, uh, like the Indiana Jones games, that, but, game that the Bethesda yeah. uh, announced that Machine Machine Games are working on. That's going to be an exclusive. Uh, future, yeah. all sorts of well, things are going to be exclusive, which is great well, for Microsoft. Is, the Indiana Jones game, though, is that a Zenimax game? It's a it's not Z- is it? Zenimax in the sense of Bethesda the own Bethesda. And Bethesda that own machine games. And machine games yeah, are quite okay. along with all of these others in sort of a bulk pack, a multi pack purchase see, at the local see, supermarket by Microsoft. Is the, yeah, this is the thing though, right? The Indiana Jones games historically have always been PC games. And I remember there was one, I think it was the, uh, there was one I think came out on the original Xbox. And that's it. But they've never really cut. The Indiana Jones games by their nature have never come out on PlayStation. And so. I think that's just that's just following history, the history of the Indiana Jones games. But honestly, end of the day, I think this is fantastic for the video games industry because mm. we've had this on an episode of Impossible Motion previously, how the video game community is so incredibly pro PlayStation that they cannot see yeah. how awkward it is for anybody who doesn't have a PlayStation how what they're missing out on, what they don't have. And it's a place coming from incredible selfishness and privilege that they don't realise that competition makes an industry a much healthier and better place. Basically, what they want is the Scottish Football League. This is, it is an analogy, right? What PlayStation <laughs> fans want is the Scottish Football League. So Celtic win it for eight this. years straight. And now Rangers run it last year. Like, oh no, game over, man. <laughs> game over. <laughs> but no, once upon a time, the Scottish Football League used to dit dot dit dot dit dot between Celtic and Rangers all the time. <laughs> and that's what we want yeah. in the video game industry. We want dit dot between Celtic and Rangers, or in this case, let's say Hearts are the third team. Celtic Rangers Hearts, there we go. A trifecta of competitiveness with Nintendo, Sony, and PlayStation. No, it's Nintendo, Sony, and oh, Microsoft. Oh, God. Because, n- no, no, seriously, because uh, you, 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 you kind of. You've hit it kind of on the nose, but accidentally you've also made it. Uh, you've also been remarkably accurate in your analogy, um, because uh, well, and also wildly inaccurate because right now hearts are running away with the uh, with the uh, with the league. Well, uh, that's because hearts are hearts are, <laughs> hearts are hearts are hang on hearts are red. Now Rangers won the league. Uh, officially, Rangers won the league. But if you if we take your analogy, Hearts are running away with the league because they're red. Xbox is green, which is Celtic, and PlayStation is blue, which is Rangers. I didn't really colour code it as an analogy, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, that's my point. And it's good for video games, honestly, because it makes it a much more like, uh, com- competition breeds excellence. And when yes. two I mean, companies which are firing in all cylinders and have all these things coming out, they make each other better. And yeah. unchallenged I, Sony I make, is... I, I, I'll say that this last comment. An unchallenged Sony, for me, is a boring Sony. Very good at what they do, well, but I, ultimately a bit boring. Okay, I'm going to jump on you here because I'm going to make my point as well. I make a big, pl- a big point about talking about when I was a kid playing video games and all of the stuff that was available then, Yeah. Commodore 64, ZX Spectrum, moving on to the Commodore Amiga and the Atari Super ST, competitive, the Amstrad. Yeah, um, yeah the, you had this massively competitive environment where Atari was still a player. Uh, Sega and Micro, Sega and Nintendo were basically battling each other. And you had uh, Commodore 
uh, on one side and you had PC gaming on the other side and then you had the weird things that were coming out of Japan, like, uh, you know, and that was an environment that lent itself to massive development in video games, massive imagination in video games and real actual, uh, this is when you got games that, you know, that basically changed the environment for video games just by the na just by existing. And that's why a, a lot of people look back on the 90s, for example, of video games, like the whole decade, and say that was a golden age of video games because that when that was when there were a lot of uh, there was a lot of competition for video games between a lot of different uh, you know in a lot of different areas, not just between one console and another. And yes, Sega and Nintendo kind of dominated the headlines, but you had in the background all of these other. Um, platforms that were competing with each other as well. It was a healthier marketplace. And we don't have that right now. Yeah, it was a healthier marketplace because there was more competition. We don't have that now. It's either it's either Nintendo, Nintendo, uh, PC, so, uh, PlayStation, or Xbox. That's it. But Sony have mainly Xbox run rampant. Sony have well, run rampant on I'll, the industry. I think. I think a lot, uh, I think Sony gets. Uh, I think Sony gets an undue amount of attention. And and it, it's always puzzled me why there's so much bias towards PlayStation, why there's so much positivity towards PlayStation, especially from younger fans who never grew up with the original PlayStation. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I don't you want know, to get too stuck on this. The nostalgia doesn't fit. I don't want to get too stuck on this because we have talked about this before in a previous episode of Impossible Mission, but what I will say is good on Microsoft and I can see Sony losing a lot of customers because as much as the internet community likes to have a go at Bethesda for making buggy games, they have a lot of fans. Oh, God, yes. I um, don't think those fans will want to miss out. I think Sony will lose quite a chunk of people because of those people who want to keep on playing Bethesda games. I'll be honest, if it was me in charge, right? if I was Phil Spencer, right, what I would do... All of those games that weren't available on uh, the Xbox console, that all those Bethesda, uh, Zenimax, whatever uh, developer games that were only available on PlayStation, I would have an updated version of those released for Xbox Series X and S. Yeah? Yeah. And I'd basically do that first, especially with franchise games where you're going to have, have a new addition to that franchise, a new iteration of... Uh, sorry, a new chapter, uh, a new a sequel to whatever existing games in that franchise is going to come out at some point in the future. I would make a big play and push these franchises out on Xbox and get the players ready for the new addition to that franchise and have that new addition be an exclusive. I'll, one last comment. All I'll say is I would follow Arcane through Hellfire. And that's all yeah. I've got to say. Um, no. Staying with Microsoft, uh, it, it's bizarre because... There's been some uh, there's been some interesting moves on Microsoft's part. Um, Microsoft are testing, uh, and this might not seem like it's video game based this news, but it is. It really is. So stick with me. Um, Microsoft are testing a Chromium powered browser, a Chromium powered Edge browser on Xbox. This is relevant because, as far as I last heard, there wasn't a browser on the PlayStation Five. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Um, they've started Xbox console testing for the new Chromium version of Edge. And the the thing is, this browser has had positive reviews on PC and should provide support for Chromium-powered services such as Google Stadia. <laughs> now, you, I see where you're going. Now you yeah. see where I'm going with this, right? Because Xbox uh, will, all, will already have its own xCloud service on Xbox consoles, right, which can be done through browser-based streaming using a Chromium-based browser. And if you can use Google Stadia on a Chromium-based browser on Xbox as well, why would you go and buy Stadia, a Stadia system when you can just use your Xbox to have multiple streaming services? Yeah, I mean, it, before that, just having a browser, I think, is important because not having one, uh, just on the media yeah. app aspect... Everything has a streaming service, and only a select few have an app on these platforms. So by having a streaming mm. service, people use their consoles as like streaming boxes. I do, for one. Yeah. But allowing them to use like a web browser allows them to use the things that don't have apps. 
and that's a big part. Yeah. That's a big part of the video gaming experience. I know it was basically what cost Xbox One at the opening, but funnily enough, time has proven Xbox ahead of the curve. <laughs> funnily enough, yeah. and this it's kind of weird because it kind of follows on from that story a little while ago. How if you put the Xbox uh, S or X in developer mode, you can basically uh, mm. run old PlayStation games. Yeah, which is. <laughs> It's bizarre, but I mean, as much as as much as I like um, certain aspects of the technology behind the PlayStation Five, I have to say what Microsoft has built in the Series X is it's a phenomenal piece of kit. Well, what, just on a design aspect, what I like about it is the PlayStation Five is look at me, 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 look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas the Xbox, it says it like that as well, getting increasingly aggressive. <laughs> Whereas well, the, X, is, the I mean, Xbox uh, Series X, it's just part of the house. You get used to it. It's not making a big deal. It yeah, just does I mean, its job. It, it's really laid back about it. It's it, it, it's it, it's that, it's that black box that sits there. And you just go, what's that black box? So yeah, oh <laughs> yeah, it's an it. Xbox. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, uh, look at look at the uh, you know the PlayStation is you know it's blue, white, and black, and you look at it and you go, oh, it's a it's a PlayStation Five, and that whole thing with the the D brand black plates, yeah, <laughs> where you can change the plates to the black ones and D brand going, yeah, sue us, sorry, go ahead, sue us, You're like, Are you sure you want to do that D brand? Yeah, kind of, because everyone uh, uh, everyone was going, oh, you know, look at look at the balls on D brand, oh, uh, don't don't they have swagger? I'm going, hmm. Not the best move. <laughs> challenging a challenging a multi billion dollar international corporation to sue you. Yeah, but this is kind of it. Kind it, it is furthering this idea. I mean, PC gamers have said it for a long time, but basically, uh, games consoles are PCs tailored towards games exclusively. There's no like yeah. other purposes you can use them for really. Um, whereas yeah. this generation, this past generation, has really made that divide between one and the other really, really thin. And with the Xbox Series X especially, superbly thin. It's basically non-existent. Yeah. Honestly, I'm going to make a bold prediction here. Towards the later end of the generation with the Xbox Series X, I wouldn't be surprised if it started introducing normal PC functionality. It's weird you say that. I genuinely wouldn't be surprised. Especially with stories like this, I genuinely wouldn't be surprised. It's weird you say that because... Um, I've heard a similar prediction about um, gaming laptops. Okay. Right? I've heard a very similar prediction about gaming laptops, how in the next five years, gaming laptops will be almost... uh, Gaming laptops will have effectively stepped over that threshold and become portable games consoles, effectively. On the way there already, aren't they? Yeah. But, you know, their primary functionality... You know, they'll remove a lot of the functionality that makes it more of a oh, PC, and they'll become... Pop- Here's an addendum to the prediction. Yeah. There you go. You basically hit it, and that's next gen. Portable uh, portable Xbox, C- uh, Xbox. Yeah, yeah, as a laptop. It's on screen. There we go. I think that's yeah. that's a big ball. That's a big-ass ball produc- uh, prediction we just made. Now, now, a portable Xbox, an actual Xbox laptop, that, I think... You know that I think will be a serious challenge to Nintendo, and, well, I, 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 and we might not yeah, have. It's to... a big prediction, but I'm happy with it. Yeah, I, I'm happy with it as well because uh, I, I wouldn't put. You know, it's not beyond the bounds of possibility. The technology is there, especially if they use the Ryzen processors. Um, and I don't think Sony will be happy if rumors of. I, I mean, I would be. I, I would love it if Microsoft just suddenly came out, you know, if someone from Microsoft watched this and then just, you know, on the fly go, just started going, these two these two guys in England, they predicted what we're doing. We need to keep an eye on them. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Well, uh, look, it, it's a logical progression from what they have and it's uh, and what's happening in kind of the, la- the gaming laptop space anyway. Yeah. It's a log- logical progression. And so I, you know, it, it's a reasonable assumption to make. I can't make the same assumption about Sony. I think Sony have too many. They've got too many bridges to cross. They've got too many things that kind of stand in their way 
Sony, and if Sony went down the gaming laptop route, they have tried laptops in the past, but they kind of went very good, and it kind of uh, was chastened as a business by Sony. See, that's the thing: the Sony, the Vio laptops made by uh, that Sony put their name to, weren't bad laptops per se. It's just uh, they were, they were just, they were more designer pieces. They were aiming at a market that was being cornered by Apple without actually understanding what made that market work. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, I understand. And there's a reason why there's there's a reason why Apple uh, computers, why a lot of creatives use Apple computers, is because they're seamless transition from one device to another. Then they have a lot of really powerful. Uh, software that creatives really want to use built into Apple devices, you know? And so um, Sony went into that area trying to make laptops for these people who wanted designer laptops without understanding why these people wanted these designer laptops. Yeah. It wasn't simply a status thing. And honestly, I think Sony are a bit stubborn and backward-looking rather than forward-looking, but that's that's besides the point. Even as a fan, I'm happy yeah. to say uh, that. But yeah, let's move on. Yeah. Anyway, moving on to um, well, <laughs> Outriders. The demo for Outriders came out. Yeah. And as normally happens, you had loads of people downloading the demo for Outriders, which was all fine and good. Yeah. Right. Um, but then the developer, People Can Fly, had to make an announcement that uh, placed limitations on what the players could. Uh, could effectively farm in the demo because people were... Well, let's put it this way. Everyone kind of went a bit nuts. Well, a lot of people went a bit nuts with the farming in the demo because after the demo, if you could basically transition and take all your stuff into the main game. And so people basically went, okay, so I've just got the demo, not the main game, but I'm going to get the main game. I might as well go nuts here and get as much stuff as I can. See, there's a hidden side story of this. This is a huge deal for, I think it's People Can Fly, the company that did Outliers. Yeah. This is basically a big banner that says, this game is so good that people are playing our demo so much that they're farming stuff when the game comes. The anticipation is that high for it, that people are farming yeah. beyond the limits of the demo. So we've got to kind of say, calm down, slow it down. That is a PR dream, honestly. For people can fly. Well, I mean, there are certain things that uh, may, that basically attracted people to farming in the demo. Number one, it contains a significant part of the fir- uh, uh, sorry, a significant chunk of the first part of the game, and any progress you make in that section, including the loot you get, carries forward into the main game if you buy the main game, and you're also able to repeat a lot of the content in the demo. Over and over and over and over and over and over again. But repeating what I said. Which means you're... Yeah. They won't be doing it if it wasn't fun. No, the thing is, they won't be doing it if there wasn't a purpose to it. And these people who were farming like this, they're all going to buy the main game because they want to play the main game with all of this, you know, all of this stuff that they've managed to get just from the demo. And it got so bad that people can fly, had to put a limit on that. Right, but they've also come out uh, and acknowledged uh, that one particular uh, player of the demo for Outriders. Guess how long he's been playing for? I'd hate to guess. Hundreds of hours. Yeah, two hundred and fifty-four hours. He's played the demo. How long is the demo exactly? I'm um, pretty sure. So I assume it's like a few hours at most. Yeah, I mean, That's let's a few put it this way. Gone through it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The the demo went live on the twenty fifth of February, and this player, uh, people can fly, tweeted about uh, made the announcement about this player's feed on the twelfth of March, and that means that the player has clocked two hundred and fifty four hours in just fifteen days. Again, that's a great advert, isn't it? Yeah, he's done nothing but play Outriders. I mean, honestly, I didn't think it was going. To, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of jumping to a conclusion here. I mean, it might have like an ardent fan base. Every game is an ardent fan base. It's just a very, very active ardent fan base. I'm reading a lot into it, but I never expected it to be anything, really. I just thought it was going to be another throwaway game. Um, I'm going to take an adjacent story here, but this just proves how 
much Poland is improving as a producer of video games. Yeah. That it can get I'm, such... Uh, the, the, like, and, like, honestly, Polish video games is sort of a niche, a very, very niche thing to the side. It's it's proven that, you know, other countries are improving as video game producers, and that's good for video games. And this is a great news right, for people I, to fly. I will say this, right? Okay, CD Projekt Red dropped the ball with uh, Cyberpunk, yeah? They dropped the ball massively with Cyberpunk. But... I will say one. Uh, I will say one thing uh, as a big positive for them. They brought attention to Polish developers in a big way, and they picked uh, and that ball. They brought a lot of it. Really random. Yeah, it. and yeah, they brought a lot of attention to Polish developers, and they brought a lot of investment to other Polish developers who might not have made it off the ground, who might not have succeeded in the in the way they've succeeded if it wasn't for the success of CD Projekt Red. It's good for video games. So, you know... It's going back to that yeah, competition aspect video that games. I was talking about earlier. It's just good. Exactly. Exactly. A nice little addendum to this story. Um, a player replied to People Can Fly's tweet with a screenshot showing an Outriders character with an inventory full of legendary weapons, saying, that was probably me with the 254 hours player. How oh, can you get legendary weapons in a demo? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you can. That's why people were playing the demo. <laughs> okay. They, look, look. They, all, 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 all I can say is there's farming in games like Harvest Moon and Animal Crossing, and then there's farming in Outriders. It's actually maybe more interesting moving in the game than on. it was previously, which is a, f- a thing. Yeah. Moving on to... Um, an unusual story, which uh, might not seem interesting to other people, but there is uh, there's something in this story which I am fascinated by, right? I am really fascinated by the hidden aspect to this story, which I don't think a lot of people have paid attention to. Um, there's a free-to-download virtual gaming world called Roblox. Anyway, it's available on PC, Xbox, and mobile, and it's, uh, it's basically... Um, it's made its debut on the stock market, right? Now, Roblox is Roblox is a particular type. It's kind of it's one of those maker games. It's way it's an online game platform and game creation system, which is developed by the the Roblox Corporation. It allows users to program games and play games created by other users. So, in a very strange way, it's a lot like things like little big planet mario maker and even to a degree minecraft yeah yeah now they floated on the stock market and at the end of the first day they were valued at 38 billion dollars how did they manage that now i just want to give you a comparison right ea's current market cap is 37.43 billion dollars take two is 18.98 and ubisoft is 8.16 so Roblox, the platform and the Roblox Corporation, is valued higher than EA after just one day of trading. Of course, like <laughs> the stock market is so open to fluctuation. Yeah, this might be just like an early, but, uh, early boom, but still, yeah, what, a, yeah, what a, an early boom! A pl- a, yeah, a, cr- a game creation platform. And this is kind of huge news it's... because, honestly, all the games creation platforms, with the exception of Minecraft, which, honestly, calling it a game creation platform is kind of a stretch. But generally, yeah. beyond this, most of them are very, very minor successes. They've not really broken through into the mainstream because they're too hard for the layman. This is kind yep. of... I mean, it might just be that opening day, whiz, bang, pop. But even if it's not, this is kind of a breakthrough for maker games. Well, this is the thing. Um, the thing, the interesting thing about Roblox is that uh, it's it, it basically uh, it came out in two thousand and six, and it hosts user created games of multiple genres coded in the programming programming language Lux, right? Sorry, uh, Lua. Sorry, in the programming ra- language Lua. My glasses uh, were funny there. Um, for most of its history, it's been relatively small, um, and it's not really not really had a lot of people paying attention to it. It's free to play. You've got in-game purchases, and it's available on mobile platforms. And my nephew played this for a while as well. Yeah, right. And his friends all played it. And this is the th- this is the thing I think which is the key 
uh, thing to remember with this story is that it was available as a free-to-play mobile game and kids went for it in droves. Not gamers or anyone like that, but kids who were basically making simple level levels for their friends to challenge. I think that's where... I'm talking school kids. I think that's where Dreams dropped the ball, honestly. If they made that free-to-play, yeah, would have like cleaned up. If they made it free-to-play and, and aimed it at school kids... They would have. They would have cleaned up. Not as quite as demanding. And I think that's yeah. yeah, not quite as demanding. And I think that's the that's the fundamental thing. The reason why Little Big Planet succeeded and Dreams failed because there was and a why, there is, so, why something like Little Big Planet succeeded because there was a car game and the yeah. uh, effectively the multiplayer mode was crashing and playing other people's levels. Dreams doesn't have that. Doesn't have much of a car game. I mean, uh, if you look at something like Mario Maker, nobody really. Uses Mario Maker? Not anymore, but they did. It was very popular for like a yeah. lightning hot moment. Yeah, and do you know why it why nobody uses Mario Maker? No. There's a fundamental reason why. And it's uh, and Nintendo kind of dropped the ball on this one, right? Uh Mario Maker is a really good game creation so uh platform, but Nintendo dropped the ball because they keep releasing Mario games. So why would you go to the go to the trouble of making more levels for a Mario game when you can just buy the latest Mario game? Well, that's Nintendo for you, isn't it? I guess. <laughs> See my point. Yeah. Nintendo is so, Nintendo yeah. is its best friend and its worst enemy simultaneously, constantly. Yeah. Um, also, um, there are various things that um, that uh, Roblox has started doing as a platform. You know how uh, Fortnite. Uh, you know, they did like game tra- movie trailers and stuff like that in yeah. Fortnite within the game. Well, uh, there's a there's a thing that uh, is happening. There's a thing that happened last year, right uh, around November time last year. Um, Roblox present uh, Roblox presents the Lil Nas X concert concert experience. Now, I have no idea what that is. It's a rapper, isn't but it? But the fact that there was little Nas. The, the fact that there was a rap, yeah, the fact that there was a rap concert within the game. <laughs> that's forward thinking, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and that's the kind of thing. Uh, I think that's the kind of thing that makes them get valued at thirty-eight billion dollars. Yeah, forward thinking. Yeah. So um, on to our final bit, and it's also the debut of. Uh, our intermittent section, which only happens when we find something worthy to fit in this section. Um, yeah, this... it's time. It's time for trailer trash. <laughs> Basically, we named trailer <laughs> trash first, and news trash came out of that because it's such a, a good name. But yeah, uh, this yeah. is the trailer, the live action movie trailer for that famously story heavy video game franchise, Dynasty Warriors. Yeah, I mean uh, the the live action trailer has come out for it, and I'm just I'm sitting there going, "Oh my god!" They 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 they, they followed the costuming like ridiculously yeah. well, even to the point where uh, I think is uh, Lu Bu has the giant feathers sticking out of his head. Yeah, I did notice that. It's also got the sort of the crowd fighting mechanics. We've lost the shots yeah. of them I mean, jumping it's... in the air and basically punching 20, 20 hundred people at once. <laughs> yes. I mean, how... Uh, of all the franchises that you would make a live-action adaptation of, Dynasty Warriors was, n- was not at the top of my list. It wasn't even on the list, Rob. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Because yeah, Dynasty Warriors, the whole point is, we're in feudal China, warring states China, let's just have a load of fi- like, historical figures... Beat up hundreds of people. That's it. That's all that has yeah. ever been to it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the epitome of the one versus a thousand <laughs> fighting system. It was That's gameplay it. system first, story, but twelfth. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put it this way. Do you remember when they did the uh, Warriors All Stars? Yeah. Uh, I think I reviewed it a, a while ago, where uh, you basically had. Samurai Warriors and Dynasty Warriors and various other wa- characters from Warriors games all transported to, transported to another world where they had to save the world by fighting off hordes of enemies. And that basically cemented, for me, the fact that the story was really was really irrelevant to any yeah. of this. And the irony is about this is you'd think, oh, so it's some 
pretty decent budget thing with lots of newcomers. You know, making a chance in it, like they did with the anime uh, Parasite movie. It was like an up and comer. I think short of yeah. summer time, something like that. No, this has got legit yeah. stars in it. Like legit, yeah, mega Chinese it's, stars. It's got, it's got some good CGI and it's also got some bad CGI. Well, it's trailer. kind of like Japanese blood in modern movies, isn't it? It's not real blood; it's CG blood. I mean, seriously, Japanese cinema. Can yeah. we just drop the CG blood? Bloody hell! Uh, <laughs> but this, it, it doesn't look yeah, that bad, uh, honestly. I, the thing is, I would, I think I'd happily sit down and watch it. I, I think I would happily sit down and watch it. It looked. I am more. Uh, I am more excited about a Dynasty Warriors movie, uh, and watching a, a Dynasty Warriors movie. I think I'm, I. I. I think I prefer it. Uh, prefer this trailer to the trailer of Mulan. Very different movies. Very different movies. But but I mean, uh, when I saw the trailer of Mulan, I was just thought, yeah, I. I don't think it's gonna work the way you think it works. You can't take a uh, an Americanized version of a Chinese of a Chinese story and then transport it back to China and say this is the ver- your version of the story when it's not their version of the story at all because I've seen the Chinese version of Mulan and it's very different yes. and also a lot more bloody well, yeah naturally naturally <laughs> but yeah this, this seems like a big crowd pleasing blockbuster yeah well Crowd pleasing to the people who play Dynasty Warriors games. It's crowd pleasing in a sense of like China still has a lot of love for its historical figures. It's Romance of the Three Kingdoms. It's not just China. It's like the entirety of Southeast Asia has a lot of love for Romance of the Three Kingdoms. That's why it's called Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Because it's a man's romance. And when we're talking man's romance, we're talking like the One Piece version of man's romance. Well, trains, that was pirates, that was a guy spaceships. in uh, Suda, <laughs> not, yeah, Suda Fifty One game, the pervy one where a mini game was looking down. Oh the, yeah, the yes. waitress's like dress. It oh 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 yeah, Suda Fifty One. Come on, but yeah, it was a throwaway line in that where like your gunsmith basically had the line a man's romance is trains. And it's like, yeah, yeah, it is, boy. <laughs> and it's not in a sort of making trains yeah. on the side. He means full, he means having sweaty, no t shirt fights with trains. <laughs> you know, so there's that. But this looks okay, you know, considering what it is and what it could have been and what it's based on, it's better than it has any right to be. That doesn't make yeah. it good, but I mean, better than it has any right to be. The, the, the thing that I find kind of ironic and hilarious about this live action dynasty warriors trailer right is the fact that dynasty warriors is based around the romance of the three kingdoms yeah, yeah? and ver- and includes all various other chinese uh chinese uh characters from folktale and myth and legend mm-hmm. yeah but primarily it's based around the romance of the three kingdoms and i've watched like an entire tv series from china Based on the romance of, that basically told the story of the romance of the three kingdoms, and it had nowhere near as many fights as this. Of course not, Rob. <laughs> of course not. And on that, I think we draw a line in the <laughs> the sand for this week's edition of News Trash. If you liked the video, then give us a thumb, a sub, or a bell. And if you want to see more videos like this, then support us on Patreon. Thanks for watching or listening. If you're listening to this on a podcast feed. I believe this is a solo episode, uh, but if you're watching on YouTube, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Bye!